Good evening. Tonight I'm reading another scary story by H.P. Lovecraft called Dagon, reimagined by R.J. Ivankovic. So, if you're sitting bolt upright, snugly in your straight jacket, in your straight back chair, then listen. I'm recording these words under some mental strain. I've run out of the drug that was calming my brain. By the end of tonight, I will surely be dead. Maybe then I'll escape all the things in my head. Though I've tried to forget it, I want you to know why I'd leap from this room to the street down below. All my troubles began one particular trip when I supervised goods on a small merchant ship. As we crossed the Pacific, unbroken and blue, we were sailing that ocean where sailed but a few. In a stroke of misfortune, we couldn't ignore. We crossed paths with a ship from Kaiser's Great War. When the sea raider slowed and then pulled alongside, we had no other choice but to swallow our pride. We surrendered ourselves and our ship was a prize. I began to steal water and other supplies. After just a few days, having kept out of sight, I escaped in a boat in the midst of the night. I assumed I would surely be picked up once more or be carried on currents to some distant shore. But with no navigator to show me the way, the equator was northward, was all I could say. After many long days, with no rescue in sight, I began to lose hope and had nightmares at night. Then one morning I woke in a scene out of hell. There was slime and dead fish with a sinister smell. I'm not certain what happened. It seems so absurd. I believe a volcanic eruption occurred. When the hellish black mire rose up from the deep, I'd been thrown from the boat without breaking my sleep. Having crawled to the boat like a stranded earthworm, I sat three days and nights while the slime was baked firm. Without sign of the sea or direction to go, I felt hopelessly small in that landscape of woe. But then, off in the distance, I spied a small bump that I guessed was a hammock or some kind of hump. The monotonous island showed only that hill, so I went to explore. I regret it now still. After three days of walking, I paused for a rest, just before I attempted my climb to the crest. Once the chill of night had replaced the day's heat, I discovered a canyon laid out at my feet. I climbed into the rift by the gibbous moonlight, and I found at the bottom a breathtaking sight. In the depths of that canyon, thrown from the sea floor, there were carvings of things man has not seen before. Though the monolith shocked me, my senses returned when the water's dark surface had rippled and churned. I was frozen with fear as the water disgorged, a creature the depths of the ocean had forged. When the thing bowed its head and embraced the cold stone, all the seeds of the madness that haunts me were sown. When it uttered a sound from the back of its throat, I succumbed to a panic and fled to the boat. Though I tried singing songs to forget what I'd learned, I'm not sure I was sane by the time I returned. I got into the boat, and I lay on the floor. I heard many strange sounds. I recall nothing more. 
Then the next thing I knew, I woke up in a bed. I'd been picked up adrift out at sea, the nurse said. I consulted an expert to share what I'd seen. He had no expertise about where I had been. So a last word of warning, for what it is worth, when the monsters arise, they will conquer the earth. Now I've run out of time, and can tell you no more, as the creatures outside had just thumped on my door. It has followed me here, under sea and on land, in an effort to catch me. My goodness, that hand! I will not let it find me, of that I've no doubt, though the window presents me the only way out. The end.